What's going on YouTube? Fuzzy Wuzzy. Bought this hydraulic crimping tool. Bought it for a couple reasons. Uh, it's the YQK300, and they call it hydraulic pliers. It's a 16 ton crimper for battery cables. I bought it to make new cables for the lowrider come springtime, but I also bought it to use right now, which I already did on that white Explorer I fixed a while back because it needed new cables. And the positive cable was a pain in the ass. It's in the harness. It runs all over the car underneath. I didn't want to do that. It had them crimp on ends on it. I don't like them ends. So I bought, here's the remnants of it. I bought a real short battery cable, these butt splices, put it together, crimped it, shrink wrapped it. Bob's your uncle. Working out super duper. But I've seen this tool on another channel I subscribe to. He's a car audio guy. And he does extreme audio. And he's also, he's got like eight or ten batteries in the back of his expedition. And, uh, you know, I asked him questions about it. He didn't get back to me. You know, whatever, that's cool. I'm like, whatever, you know, fuck you. I'll buy it myself. It's So, here's what I think of it. Here's what I got. It's 40 bucks. It says 16 tons. There's not, uh, you can tell by looking at it. It's not extremely quality. It's some Chinese shit right off the boat, I'm sure. But for 40 bucks, what do you expect? The instructions, which I have already mutilated. I've already got them filthy. I've, I've had it like a couple weeks. It's crazy how I do that. The instructions I'm not very happy with. They're kind of vague. Like, this is the 300, so the 300... It, uh, maximum working pressure, well, it's 16, I know it's 16 tons, but they just got 16. Stroke, tw 20 what? Inches, centimeters, you know, I don't know. There's no 4.5 what? Kilos, ounces, you know, I don't know. I wish they would put unit of measure. This chart, I, I'm not a big fan of this chart. Uh, and these, it's got all these dies for different sizes of cables. You can tell what dies go together because they got numbers on them, like 35 and 35. You can see they line up. That, that's what does the crimping. You put it in there, it squeezes it, it crimps it. The dies, they don't, they don't seem that bad. Uh, I don't know how, you know, the hardness level of them. It being a die, I would imagine it, has, it should be pretty pretty freaking hard. But, I, you know, I don't know how to check for that. Since most of the ends like these, these are copper, tin-coated copper. The tin is just, you know, corrosion-resistant shit. So, even if they're not the hardest thing in the world, it's not like you're going to be, you know, crushing super hard shit with them. I think they'll work out. The hydraulics on it, it, it actually works really nice. It is Chinesium and shit, but it, it works well. One of my two complaints is when it ships, it comes with these dies already in the jaw. Well, I, I wish there was a spot to hold them just like these are. So you either got to put them back in or let them flop around in the case, which I'm not a fan of. Also, let me find it. There you go. It's these. These number 95s, which I don't know if these numbers represent anything or if it's just a random number they put on there so you could tell it apart. These 290, that die matches up like shit. I, you know, I bought it. It was 40 bucks shipped to go through the hassle of sending it back, trying to warranty it just for that. When it'll probably still crimp just fine. I'm not going to go through it, but I did take note of it. And also, in the instructions, there's no chart to tell you. This is, this is a two-gauge cable. I'm getting ready to crimp. And I got two-gauge connectors. It doesn't tell you what die to use. 
So there's a little bit of a learning curve with it, which you can see my learning curve here on this. That's what happens when you use too small of a die. See how it's got those little wings on the side? That's what it looks like when you do it correctly, but we'll get there. All right, so I got this two gauge cable. Got this two gauge, oh, also I noticed, I couldn't find these regular butt connectors in town anywhere. I looked at uh, a home supply store, like an electrician's place, and they had them, but they were covered and shrouded for outdoor use. So I got these on the internet, and they work, but if you notice, this has that little flare on the end to help you get the strands in there. These do not, and without it, it is a pain in the ass to get all these strands on there. So if you can find, when, you, when you're buying some, if you can find that little flare, get them. You'll, you'll be glad you, you, you'll be glad you got them. Okay, so let me get this set up and do some crimping. All right, so this is how you get it set up. This pin just pulls out of there, and now the jaws are open. You choose your dies, and I think this is what you're going for. This is the second biggest die. So you can see, this is the second biggest die. I think this is what you're going for. Hold on. Is that gap right there. So it's not excessive. I think that'll be enough to crush and crimp it real good. Then you just slide it in here. Fuck. In there like that. In there like that. You fucking piece of shit. In there like that. Pin first. So now you're loaded. Let me flip it around like that. Close that valve. Start pumping. Take up some of that slack so it gets to the end. Shit. No, I fucked up. Let's put the cable through first. Then we'll do it. Cable. Cable through. Okay. Moving it around a lot, shit like that happens where it tries to fall out. And so, you know, you got to be pretty sure where you want it. You only get one shot at this. Before you ruin the connector. So let's crimp. That's what she looks like. And that, my friends. That is not going anywhere. I think I'm sliding the insulation back before that moves because this is a shorter piece of cable. That is not going anywhere. Can't even twist it off. You can see that it's twisting right in there. It ain't moving in that joint. Now you put, beforehand, if you put a piece of shrink wrap over it, it looked like a million bucks. So there you go. I think it's going to work well for what I'm doing. And since I don't use it every day, it being a cheap tool, you know, I'd, I'd recommend it. I would buy it again, despite the couple things I didn't like. And for those of you that say, Fuzzy, why don't you solder? Well, on my last lowrider, it was another Lincoln, it was a 91, and I was doing something, hopping it, I was, I was pretty much abusing the system, the hydraulic system, 
and shit back there got so hot on one of the motors that it melted the solder and the cable fell out. So ever since then, I'm not a solder guy, crimp guy, every car in the world that has connectors from the factory, they're crimp. I shouldn't say every car in the world. Somebody's going to be like, Fuzzy, you dumb piece of shit. Uh, most cars out there, they're crimped from the factory, not soldered. If it's good enough for the billions and billions and billions of connections that have been made already, it's good enough for me. That's how you do that. Peace.